In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Good morning, everyone. As we come closer and closer to the cross and to the resurrection, the church again brings us and gives us always the reminders of the season and reminders of who we are and where are we heading. When you read the, 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 the readings of today and the, the paralyzed man, which were again one of the very, very well-known Sundays of the Great Lent, but I ask myself a question first of all, when I when, when, when read this message, when we read this, this, this part of the scripture from John 5, and the one thing that came to mind is check in to see if, if I'm stuck in life at certain period, at certain stage, at certain, certain condition. I think the one question that I want to start with today is, are you stuck? Are you, are you stuck in your life trying to figure out something, trying to, to, to feel like you, you're, you're, you cannot move, you're not moving forward? Whether, whether that is worry, whether that is past, whether that is future, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a work. But I want to start with that question first of all. You know, check and see, I'm talking to myself the first, are we stuck? A lot of times we feel like we're stuck. We're not either, again, even if our spirituality, we're not, I don't know if I'm moving forward or not. I'm, I'm just here, right? You know, it's the same gospel we hear for the last whatever years, and it seems like the same message, it seems like the same thing, but I feel like I'm stuck. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. Which is definitely not supposed to be the reality. It's not supposed to be who we are. The Lord doesn't want us and didn't give us and bring us to this earth here to get stuck at certain stage of our life and just move on, or not moving on, just grow, but we're still stuck. We're still not able to move. And with that, you grow more frustration, you grow more uh, resentment, you grow more thick heart, because that's what it is, right? But I think the message today is, is, is much beyond that. This message today, message of encouragement. Message today, putting us in reality with, with the author of life, with reality of the, of the reality of the whole world. If you read the Pauline and the Catholic epistle today, talking about the end of the world, right? Which again, like, why is that? Why, why are we talking about the Antichrist and why are we talking about the kingdom and why are we talking about the, all the, the elements will dissolve while we're reading the paralyzed man? But I think the church in, in all the wisdom is trying to tell us something that be careful because if you're stuck, remember that all this will, will, will do what? What will happen to it? It will go, it will dissolve at one point. So why are you stuck? Why are you stuck? Why are you like the paralyzed man sitting there for years and years and years stuck and just, I have no one to carry me? We, thank God, we are not like the paralyzed man. We cannot say we have no one to carry me. We cannot say that we are stuck because we don't know, we don't have the tools, we don't have the, the, the ways, we don't have the methods that will actually take us out of our misery and out of our whatever status we are stuck at and move on towards the one thing that is not shaken and will not be shaken forever, which is the Lord himself and his kingdom. So with that mindset, let's, let's approach the, the, the readings today with that. With, again, the question is, if I am really stuck, you know, today is the encouragement, like, you know what, there is a way out of that. There is a way out of that. As he was able to go and to see and ask the paralyzed man and to get him out of his, of his status, that is the same thing for all of us today. Encouragement of the faith. That's basically what it is. Encouragement of the faith. Strengthen your faith. We'll, we'll take a look at, at three of the readings today. The Gospels of Matin, the Gosp Vespers, the Gospel of Matin, and the Gospel of the Liturgy today and see exactly where and how we have this tool, and we have him himself, first of all, to get us out of whatever status we're stuck. Again, whatever that is. But I want, I want each one of us to spend a little bit of time just evaluating and say, like, are we really stuck or not? Just answer the question between you and yourself. Are, why are we stuck, and where are we stuck, and what is happening after that? There is always encouragement, and there is always way out of this. Number one in the, in the readings of Vespers yesterday, the Gospel of Vespers yesterday, which is St. Luke of chapter 18, and I'll go to verse 7. It says that it is, it is the Gospel of, of the parable of the man and the, 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 the just or the, the judge, 
that and the lady that come to him and 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 kept asking and kept asking kept asking kept knocking like the widow that okay please please give me what uh, what I need I don't want to get stuck in that situation in verse seven in the parable says and shall and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him though he bears long with them shall God God will not delay that's what it's saying God will not delay. We delay approaching him, but he will never be delayed. Even if it's years, even if it's, we feel like, again, we are stuck and we can't get out of where we're at. But the one first thing that the church is reminding us from the, from the scripture, from the parable, again, Luke 18, the parable of the judge and the widow, that that, that, that widow kept what? Kept asking, kept knocking, and kept bothering him. And then it says, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. But then again, the question comes that God shall not delay. He will not delay. He will not delay. As he came to the paralyzed man, he's coming to everyone today and saying, what? Enough being stuck in your life. Enough. I have the solution. I have the way. And all that way is, 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 not, is beyond what you just can imagine. All the way of moving us from, from where we're stuck at is not just because of, of, of earthly things, because I have a better hope, as we always say this year, a better plan for you, which is what? Which is my kingdom. So look beyond where you're stuck at. He will not delay. He will not delay. It says also in today's Pauline epistle, but God from the beginning has chosen you. He has chosen you chosen you to move freely and to walk freely with him, not to get stuck and not to get stuck in your life. Number one, again, he will never delay. Number two, from the Matins Gospel today, Gospel of St. Matthew 21, I'll read verse 43. The Matins Gospel, again, talking about the, the, the another parable, which is the man who, or a landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge, and then he sent people in order to, to, to collect the, the, the fruit, but then they never, the, the, the people always killed them till he sent his only son. But comes to verse 43 in that parable and says, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruit of it. He's talking to the people of Israel saying, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and will be given to a nation who is what? Willing to? Give fruit. So number two, in order to see really how we can get out of the status we are, that we are stuck, let's examine ourselves and see, are we a soil and a land that is willing to give fruit or not? A lot of times we don't want to. A lot of times, again, and that's why, again, the church reminds us today of, of the end of the time. Because it's telling us, remember, that you need to work on the fruit that will stay forever. Don't just work on the things here because at one point everything will dissolve. So when he, when he talks about this today, he said, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. The question is, if I want to get out of the way that, or the, the place that I'm stuck at, let's ask myself another question. I am, am I willing and ready to give fruit or not? Is my soil, is my heart ready to give fruit or not? We're talking about the fruit of the Spirit the last couple Saturdays in the Bible study. Is my heart willing to give the fruit or not? Because my heart is not ready. And if it's not ready, why isn't it ready? Until when we keep the heart not ready? While he's standing, I said, I will make you ready. In the Pauline epistle today, again, I will establish you. Stand firm, I will establish you. Check if your land, if your heart, if your, if your soil, if your field is ready to give fruit for the kingdom. The kingdom will be given to other people, but the people heart has to be ready so they can receive the kingdom. Number one, he will not delay. Number two, that he wants a heart that is ready to bear fruit. And number three, he has the power to change. Number three, he has the power to change. If we jump into, into the, the, the gospel of today, of the beautiful miracle again, an encounter of the Lord with the paralyzed man, uh, chapter 5 of the Gospel of St. John, in verse 8 it says, he, when he faces him face to face, when he faces each one of us face to face, when we see that we are really stuck, remember that his voice is there saying, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk, as it's an order, as it's, in, it's a challenge, 
You know what? A lot of times we look at the things that we're stuck at. Look at our lives. Look at our, our, our daily practice. And we think like there is nothing that will get us out of this. We are really stuck. But the problem is we're not listening to his voice every day coming to each one of us and say what? Sad, I say to you, rise, take up your bed and walk. The last thing today is, again, that he has the power. Whether we are listening to his voice or not, this is our problem. But he's coming to each one of us and saying, enough, I don't want you to get stuck. I don't want you to get stuck at the, at the pool just waiting as a beggar for somebody to do something for you. You have much more than that. You have my word, the word which created the whole world. He said, he said let there be light and there will be light. The same, the same one who said, wake up and, and, and arise and hold your bed and walk is the same creator. And the same one is willing and able to create a new heart that goes on and move us out of our, where, wherever we are stuck with. Today is a reminder again to challenge ourselves and see where are we stuck at. Just take some time during the liturgy and pray and see where are we stuck at and why are we stuck? And do we want to get out of that or not? Again, it might be whatever. It might be whatever, but each one of us has to find out where, what is making us immobile. What is making us stuck at the gate waiting for someone, not waiting for him. But he comes today and says, what? He will never delay. He comes today and says, be ready. Make your heart ready in order to, to bear the fruit of the kingdom. And number three, listen to the voice and to the word of the creator himself. The same one who said, let there be light and there was light, is the same one that's telling each one of us today, arise, take your bed and walk. Do we believe in that or not is another issue. May the Lord give us that understanding as we get closer and closer to the cross, closer and closer to the, to the resurrection. We won't be able to celebrate this unless we get out of where and what and how we were stuck in our lives. There is always a gate. There is always an exit. And he is the gate. He is the door that we can move out of where we at and get and pass over. That's what we're doing in Pascha, right? We pass over from being stuck under the bondage of the enemy into the freedom and the liberty of the glory of God. I really pray that God give us that mind and this vision as you're praying right now to really examine ourselves in a very, very, very faithful way and see what are we stuck with, why we can't move, what we, why we can't move, and know that again, if even we think that he is delayed, he never delayed. Knowing that he is asking us first to get ready. Get ready for the miracle to happen. That's what he said to the, old, to the, to the people in the Old Testament, to Joshua. Sanctify yourself because tomorrow there will be a miracle. Sanctify yourself. The miracle is happening. The miracle is right at the gate waiting for you. But it depends on each one of us whether we sanctify ourselves or not. Or we are comfortable as we are stuck and we're not moving. And finally, hear the voice, the same voice of the creator who said, let there be light, is the same voice he's telling each one of us today, arise, take your bed and walk. To him the glory, now and forever, to the ages of all.